Hi, I'm Corey Shockey, a research fellow at the Hoover Institution, and I also teach thinking about war at Stanford. I'm an expert on national security policy, do a lot of work on war strategy and budgets. So foreign policy scholars talk about end state, and what they mean is, what do we want this to look like when we're finished? What does success look like? What are the conditions we need to have pertain when we are finished? And that achieves two important things for you. First, it tells you what you're trying to do, so you know what tools you can apply in order to achieve it. And second, it prevents you from expanding what you're trying to achieve once you start to be successful at it. It's really important to define the end state in a conflict because warfare isn't just the use of military force. There are economic and diplomatic and intelligence lines of effort that also need to be applied in order to capitalize on the battlefield successes in order to achieve bigger, broader political goals, which is what warfare is all about. And if you don't know what you're trying to achieve, very often you don't use a broad enough range of tools in order to do it. No, uh, having an end state does not presume military action. In fact, more often the reverse. If you don't know what you are trying to achieve, you're more likely to use military force to just smash away at something to stop it from happening. Whereas if you have an end state, it makes it both less costly because you can use a wider diversity of means, and it also tells you where military force should fit in amongst the other tools. So um, it's very often a better idea, especially for free societies, to be open about their strategy rather than to try and keep it a secret. So people who say we shouldn't reveal our strategy mean we shouldn't tell the enemy what we're trying to do. And there's some truth to that. But in a free society, it is much more important to tell your voting public what it is you're going to do, because they are the ultimate people who have to approve your strategy. And so if you surprise the American public, for example, as President Clinton did in Somalia, where average Americans thought we were there on a humanitarian mission and then were surprised when American servicemen got killed. And so it forced the president to withdraw from Somalia, leaving an ungoverned space that has been a tragedy for Somalians and a danger for us ever since. So the trade-off is you don't want the enemy to know everything you're going to do, but it's also, in addition to the downside of our parents and our children not understanding what we're trying to do when we use military force, there's also the challenge that if you keep your strategy a secret, your allies don't know how to take coordinating actions that support it, and your enemies don't know where the thresholds are that will precipitate you pushing back against them. So, on, there are good arguments on both sides of the line. For me, the preponderance of the argument is that free societies ought to explain to their own publics and to the world what we're trying to achieve when we use military force and engage in the world. So we do have a recent and very clear statement of the end state that we are trying to achieve with American military forces, and that was Secretary Mattis in congressional testimony in uh, June of 2017. And what he said was, what we are trying to achieve in Afghanistan is a security circumstance where Afghan national forces are strong enough to protect the people of Afghanistan. That's the end state. Right? And so to get there, we have to train, equip, and assist the Afghan forces until they are strong enough to manage those security challenges. That's what we're trying to achieve. In hey, thanks very much for tuning into this conversation. If you have any other questions, please submit them below. We'd like to have a continuing conversation with you.